Glasswire is the ultimate firewall and network monitoring software. Check it out at the link below. So if you're in the market for brand new super fast M.2 SSD, chances are you might be looking for a bit of a showdown to see which is the best and which one you should consider. Well today, we've totally got you covered with our showdown and taking 10 of some of the best M.2 NVMe SSDs on the market, testing them all together and seeing which ones you should probably consider. We're going to be testing things from synthetic loads, gaming loads and real world applications as well. So strap yourself in because these tests are definitely going to be setting your next build on fire. But before we do jump into the actual test, let's go ahead and actually check out what SSDs we'll actually be looking at. Now the selection process for these SSDs was relatively simple, but I did want to keep the test sort of large enough to be, well, large, but also to not too large. So unfortunately we didn't get to test every single NVMe SSD on the market today, but I did go ahead and pick up some of the most popular ones in the largest capacity up to one terabyte. So my goal was to test all one terabyte drives, but turns out some manufacturers don't offer one terabyte. So if I couldn't get one terabyte, I then went ahead and got just as close as I could to getting a one terabyte drive. This is also too mainly because a lot of manufacturers build one terabyte drives and sort of that larger capacity drive, usually with better performance. So a smaller 120 gig drive, for example, won't necessarily perform as good as say a one terabyte option. Again, manufacturers do just do that. So one terabyte being a rather large size in today's market is definitely a good place to start. Also too, we do need to remember that these SSDs are all based on the PCIe NVMe protocol, making them much faster than your typical SATA based SSDs. SSDs that also too will go into an M.2 slot. So keep in mind, just because they're the same form factor doesn't mean they're going to be the same drives. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at these drives and we'll introduce them one by one, kicking things off with the Samsung 860 Evo and 960 Pro. These are absolute legends in the NVMe SSD world and whilst they do have a higher price tag, they are definitely well known for their very fast speeds with, well, being able to be one of the best drives on the market with very few competitors actually even getting close. But speaking of getting close to these drives, Samsung had to one-up themselves with the 970 Evo and 970 Pro. Now these guys at the time of recording are only two days old, so they're very, very new to the market, but I still want to test the 970 and also to the older 960, as I'm sure a lot of people would also to be looking at the 960 drives. Whilst they're very similar in their design and well, overall looks and basically look like the 960, there are a few under the hood changes that definitely make these guys quite a bit faster than a lot of other drives on the market. Again, they're very, very new, and if you do want to find out more, I definitely have a video coming. I'm going to be shooting that next, so expect the next video in a couple days or so to be about the 970 series, but they are very, very nice looking drives. On top of this, we're moving on to our Intel offerings. We have the Intel 600P and also two 750 series SSDs. Much like the Samsung drives, these guys are pretty well known for their reliability and also two fairly decent performance. Sure, they're not the highest performing on the market, but they're still pretty good there. And not to mention, we also do have WD in with this guy with our new WD Black SSD drive. Again, much like the Samsung drives, these are very, very brand new to the market. And it's nice to see a hard drive manufacturer getting in on the high-end SSD space. Good job there, WD. Again, to be clear, this is the brand new WD Black series. So there's been a previous WD Black SSD, but this is the brand new one. So do keep in mind the performance is going to be different from the old one. Some have speculated the release of this particular WD drive has prompted Samsung to release their new 970 drives, but I guess you can be the judge of that. Moving along, we also do find ourselves the Patriot Hellfire, and Patriot has this odd obsession with naming their things after questionably catastrophic events like Hellfire, Scorch, Burst. So whilst their drives are a little bit questionably named, the performance is definitely not too bad and is on our list here. We also do get our drive out of course Corsair, which definitely delivers good performance and also to a moderate price tag, kind of fills out the middle round of the SSD that we do have available. And rounding out our drives, we also do have the Adata SX8000, another really solid drive that doesn't exactly get all the press that some of the Samsung drives offer, but they're still not too bad offerings here, with its older sibling, the 7000 series, actually winning out a lot of awards for decent pricing and decent performance. So we'll have to see how the 8000 series compares. So there are the drives for today's and for the rest of the system that will be throwing them in. 
right here on the screen. So we did ditch our 7700K test bench for a newer setup. Whilst I don't necessarily think there would be a difference between the 7700K and also to the newer Coffee Lake chip we used, at the end of the day, there was a new chip, why not go ahead and use it? Now also too, I do want to make a quick note, yes we did quickly briefly touch on these SSDs, but if you'd like to find out more, you can go ahead and find an article or a video linked, um, which will get a little bit more into detail, and for some of the Samsung drives, we've already checked them out, should be there, or they'll be coming down the line in the not too distant future. Today, we're more focused on the performance, rather than seeing exactly what spec each drive has to offer. So, let's go ahead and start to look at the test. Now the test I ran included things such as your standard synthetics, gaming tests, and I also do threw in some content creation tasks, boot times, and a real world feel. So let's get started and take a look at the results. First up, we do have synthetics and taking a look at our graphs right here. Unsurprising to nobody, Samsung has blown it out of the water and the graphs go really, really high compared to the, some of the other options. Even though all these SSDs are blowing it away with well over a gigabyte per second transfer in the sequentials, it was crazy to see what Samsung has to offer. Even the last generation 960 still smashed it out of the water and interestingly enough WD actually came along for the ride and was able to put up some decent performance. But Corsair definitely did blow me away. It was a really strong competitor that honestly I was not expecting at this kind of performance out of the Corsair MP drives. Really nice to see and I'm really happy with the numbers that we did get here. Loading times in terms of games was a very similar story with our high-end Samsung drives winning out ever so slightly. However, we do need to keep in mind that whilst there is a bit of a difference, honestly, you cannot tell in day-to-day -day usage. Sure, there's a second here, a second there, and between the slowest and the fastest, there's a bit more of a gap, but honestly, the difference is really, really hard to, to tell. This is mainly because NVMe drives are so fast at that, and games are finding other bottlenecks elsewhere in the system than what the actual storage has to offer. Sure, if you go down to a hard drive versus one of these drives, you're going to find a very noticeable difference, but once we're up in this super premium tier of SSDs, it's kind of hard to find the difference between them all. But nevertheless, there still was a difference. In terms of real world applications, boot times were hilariously fast and even the slowest drive was absolutely destroying a lot of other things on the market. Boot times were just insanely fast. I'd hit the power button and then like it was on and ready to go. I thought this was really cool and uh, something I've not seen in a quite some time. When I went back to my own personal system, made it feel like a bit of a blob. It took so long to boot compared to these ultra fast NVMe based systems. Then we get some other tests. I'll pop them up on the screen as I do talk about a couple other things. So we also do got the Premiere Pro test. And whilst the Premiere Pro test, I couldn't necessarily measure by actually, well, putting them into numbers. If we take a look at some of footage right here, we can actually see when scrubbing through raw 4K video, it actually turns out to be not too bad of a situation. Now these 4K video does not have a proxy. It is 100% just the raw footage straight out of the camera and it does a fairly good job in terms of running as a scratch disk. However, with that being said, it wasn't actually the Samsung drives that felt more snappy. Turns out Corsair's drive felt just that ever so slightly snappy when scrubbing through 4K video. Again, it's really hard to measure and it's not something that everyone's going to be looking at and trying to measure the most minute things, but it was still something to note nevertheless. And rounding out any other tests that I haven't really flashed up yet, we'll put them up right now. Overall, the performance of these drives were pretty much as expected with Samsung winning out a lot of the tests here, but also to other drives like the Corsair drive coming in relatively close. So there are the numbers and tests. So what exactly can we make as a conclusion from these tests? Well, all these drives are really, really fast and any of these guys will be really great options for your next build. However, if you want the best of the best, if we take a look the numbers, chances are you'll be looking at a brand new Samsung drive. But if you are going to factor in things like cost, as those Samsung drives are pretty expensive, other drives from guys like Corsair are really great offerings. Heck, even Adata is up there when you do factor in the prices. Honestly though, you'll definitely be served really well by any of these drives, and if you already have an SSD, these guys are going to be slightly more noticeable and, well, deliver really great performance. When I went back to my personal rig, which just runs a standard SATA SSD, I did definitely Definitely notice a big difference going from the NVMe super fast guys down to my daily driver SSD. But let me know down in the comment sections, what would you select if you had the chance? Would you go all the way up with the top end Samsung drives or would you consider something a little bit more budget friendly but still deliver really decent performance? Let me know down below. If you want to pick up one of these drives, I've also to left them in that description box so you can pick them up right there.
there. Otherwise, thanks all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.